One of the subtopics from um, astrophysics option is black body radiation. Now, uh, this is not a racist term or anything. This is actually um, uh, something that we use not only in astrophysics, but if you remember, this is actually from topic eight. Uh, so that's the core topic. Um, and that's from energy, power, and climate change when we were talking about uh, stars, in particular the sun. So a black body is something that is a perfect emitter or absorber of radiation. And that's what a black body is. So that means that uh, it emits radiation perfectly and it uh, absorbs radiation perfectly. So that's, uh, it's a way to make our understanding of stars a little bit simpler. Now, uh, what's really cool though is that stars are very well approximated by black bodies. And this is something that we can actually understand um, if we think about how the curve looks, uh, the curve of radiation or intensity versus uh, wavelength. So I'm gonna show you that curve now. So um, it doesn't matter exactly what uh, units we use, but let's say we use, uh, this will be wavelength in meters, and this could be the intensity of light. So some sort of measure of intensity. This could be luminosity, it could be apparent brightness, it doesn't matter, but just basically saying how bright it looks. Now, um, a star or even like the element on your oven, you know, when you're actually heating up your stove, um, that actually, believe it or not, works very well to explain this. Not only one color or not only one wavelength is emitted, there's a whole spectrum of wavelengths. So because of that, then we have a curve that might look like this. So it'll be something that goes up like this and then it actually drops down fairly suddenly. So it's a little bit sort of asymmetrical here. So this right here could represent something that's maybe uh, something hotter. Now what if I take something like this and then I compare that curve to another one of uh, an object that's maybe a little bit cooler. So maybe it goes like this. So this could be something that's cooler. In other words, something that's actually not as warm when I say cooler. Um, so what we can look at then is this, uh, each of these curves has a peak intensity and each of them has a wavelength associated with that peak. So in this case right here, this value right here, where well, we could say that's a lambda max. In other words, it's the wavelength that gives us a maximum intensity. And uh, in the same way, I'll just get the white one here, uh, we have another one right here. This one right here was also a lambda max, but that one was associated with this peak right here. So we do have a peak associated with these. Now what's kind of neat though is that cooler stars then, uh, if you look at the, what the peak does, the peak goes down and it shifts to the right. In other words, uh, if you know about uh, wavelengths, these are larger and larger wavelengths. In other words, uh, for example, uh, this right here is more red. In other words, this is like uh, redder, and over here is sort of, um, you could say maybe whiter or bluer. So what you can say then is that if you look at the temperature of something, or if you want to, um, estimate something's temperature, you can take a look at this curve and then you can give a, there's a temperature associated with this temperature here, there's a curve associated with that temperature as well. So what you can do then is let's say you're heating up your uh, element on your oven, on your stove. As it starts to heat up, it gets red first. That's because it's red hot, but that's actually not that warm. What happens of course is as it gets hotter and hotter, uh, what happens then is that the wavelength moves over. In other words, it stops being so red. It might look more yellow or even more blue or even whiter. And that means that the wavelength, the peak wavelength is going to shift to smaller wavelength values. And it's going to, um, cause uh, I mean, blue, for example, is like 488 nanometers, whereas red is maybe 633. Um, or 636, it doesn't matter too much. But the important thing is that hotter things look bluer or whiter and cooler things look redder. And again, if you remember, um, if you look at ca a candle, for example, red 
color is going to be near the base of the candle, whereas whiter and bluer is going to be up near the top. There's going to be all the colors in the middle. There's going to be you know, yellows and, uh, and oranges and things like that in the middle. So we actually have a relation then between the associated temperature and the peak wavelength. So it's actually called uh, Wien's Displacement Law, but it goes like this, lambda max, and they actually mention that it's in meters, so that's nice of them to remind us. This is in your data book that it looks like this, uh, which is a bit weird that they put the meters though, because you might think it's this times meters, but there, they're just being nice and telling you the units. It's weird that they do that there, because they should have done that everywhere else, but so be it. Uh, then they have 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3. Divide that by T in Kelvin. Now this, uh, this equation right here, that's very useful. That relates the temperature of something with its peak wavelength. Remember, that's the wavelength associated with the maximum intensity. Now T right here, this is what we call an effective temperature. So it may not be the actual temperature of something, but it's the temperature associated with a black body curve. In other words, um, when we look at our sun, our sun has an effective temperature of a certain value. Uh, I think it's around 5,000 uh, Kelvin, uh, but I might be wrong on that one, I have to take a look. But um, the important thing is that our sun has a certain effective temperature associated with its black body curve, but that doesn't mean that that's the temperature of the sun. It all depends on where you're looking. So if you're on the outer part of the sun, or if you're right in the middle, it may be very, very different values. It may be way higher, it might be way lower. But uh, the important thing is just, we just say, well, because of what we receive from the sun, it's equivalent to a black body at that temperature. So when we say effective temperature, that's what we mean. It's the temperature uh, associated with that sort of curve. Sometimes these curves are actually called Planck curves, but no worries about that. Then we have another equation, and that also mentions the effective temperature. This is actually called the Stefan Boltzmann's Law. So this, uh, this is from uh, topic 8, so you might actually recognize this one. It's sigma a t to the power of 4. So that's a Stefan Boltzmann's law. What this one relates is, remember, L is the luminosity of the star, in other words, the power emitted, which is in joules per second or watts. Right, those are equivalent units, joules per second. Sigma is just a constant, and you can look that up. It's actually called the Stefan Boltzmann's constant. So you can look that up on the first couple pages. I think it's on the second page of your uh, data booklet. You can find that one there. A is the surface area of a sphere. You should be getting used to seeing this. We see this a lot. So surface area of a sphere. So in that case, it's 4 times pi times r squared. And finally, we have T. And T is the same thing here. T is the effective temperature in Kelvin, except this time it's to the power of 4. So both of these equations right here help us to know something about a black body uh, curve and also relates the effective temperature. So those are actually pretty important and they're not actually that hard to use. So you'll be seeing in past exam questions that actually these are pretty straightforward. Uh, it's important just to know what they mean, and I think it's really nice to look at what, uh, how this associates with these curves right here. So that's uh, pretty much those ones.